Oh, there we go. Um, hi, Seventh Hour. Okay, you guys responded so much better than Sixth Hour did, but don't tell them, okay? But that, thank you. That was, that was very good. Uh, all right, so first of all, I have three really quick thank yous um, that I think we need to do. Uh, and we'll clap after I say these three groups. So first of all, we need to thank the boosters. So if your parents are boosters, please go home and thank them because without their financial support, this wouldn't happen. Second of all, another group we need to thank, they're very near and dear to my heart, being part of the drama program here. So our tech crew and Mr. Crash and Mrs. Singner and everything they do as tech crew. And then the third group that we need to thank is actually just two people, but two really important people, uh, Mrs. Enk and Mr. Anderson, because without them, Writers Week wouldn't happen. So let's clap for all those people. so excited to introduce to you our speaker this hour, uh, J.C. Brooks. He's a poet, and he's the lead singer of the band Uptown Sound. Um, a few things I just happened to uh, pull off the web. Well, I didn't pull this first one off the website. He first appeared last week at Writers Week, and we were so happy that uh, he was able to come back this year because you guys won't succeed if you didn't see him last year. He's, he's amazing. Um, he's born uh, the son of a Jersey funk diva. I think maybe ask him about that. Um, and he, according to his website, his voice erupts with heart and heartache. But I know that because I've heard him sing it. Uh, the Chicago Tribune called J.C. Brooks the real deal because the band has a, quote, take no prisoners, live attack, and lyrics speaking of the torment and triumph of these tumultuous times. A lot of alliteration in there, that's what I like. Uh, Mojo Magazine identifies the band as one of the hottest U.S. soul acts. So please give a warm friend welcome to J.C. Brooks. All right, thank you. Um, I have poetry. Yeah, 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 try to throw it in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is called I've Got to Step It Up a Notch. When metaphor just won't do to metaphysicalize the spiritual supernova that is you, I've got to step it up a notch. When my sharpest wit fails to elicit even a, a chuckle, my hopes don't buckle. No, I just, I just step it up a notch. When my sarcasm sucks instead of biting, inviting you to critique my prosaic writing, citing, woo citing my penchant for using all 16 rounds of my crapped American singles caliber rhymes in my poetical lighting, if I make you check your watch, I've got to step it up a notch. Yes, my dear, the rumors are true. I'm azurist blue using my blue humor as the goopiest hue to carry me through until I can make you notice me for doing something other than shaking my ass in an alliterative tick that I am taking time tortoise-like to trap you in my text, torturously threading thoughts like popcorn garland similes, trimming tooth till it's taut with the weight of verbal decoration, words treading ideas bound for emancipation, telling the story of the glory of you. When you spin my head so fast that the centrifugal force is enough to drag all of my impure thoughts downward from the center of my brain straight out my mouth, effectively blowing my mind, my cool, and my woefully worded wad. When, even after a lengthy night of boozing, you, my muse, don't find amusement in my oh-so-rhetorical or rhetorical musings, I lose heart to think that not even a spontaneous turn of phrase can raise the gates you've raised around your smile. So I'll adopt a device, abandoning style. Order us a couple of double shots of scotch and step it up a notch. Thanks, guys. So, um, yeah, this is, I'm like trying to hide it under the podium. That's not going to work ever. Um, I, uh, I was in a hurry this morning and I printed out, oh God, I printed a whole bunch of bound papers that are, my dog is probably sitting on them on my bed right now. Um, so, thank you. Ooh. Yeah. Cranial manatees. Um, cranial manatees crashing around inside of me, pummeling the lee of my sanity, sanity, disintegrating every levy. These beasts are the chief forces behind the squall on my sea of emotion. Too much blind blubber buffers them as they drunkenly dance into the sidewalls of my skull, every thought weakening the hull of the ship that keeps me from drowning in the world. 
Television is a welcoming poacher, a beloved poacher on my mental preserve, an interloper who inspires hope for the future triumph of id over e going, going, gone, until the lids of my eyes arise to greet the dawn. You see, I am purely me when I am sleeping, keeping counsel with that creeping reaper who, sense, who senses, blah, keeping counsel with that creeping reaper who bleeps the senses that sense errors everywhere, drawing shades on that infernal, internal peeper who sees me as my misstep and nothing deeper, allowing me to heap my self-consciousness, light a match and blow it a napalm kiss. Bombastic alicasticity returned to me, allowing me to be the he I used to be when I was we and had a heart full of dreams and a head full of LSD. Thank you, Reverend Leary. Can I get an amen? And I said, hum, 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 hum. And he said, can I get a ha hallelujah? And I said, <laughs> and he said, can I get a witness? And I said, I'll testify. Fire is hot and cars are hard. I mean, come on, really. Who can dissect a thought's anatomy? Cranial manatees bombarding me, neurons connecting what's outside to the real me. Each one is a giant smaller than a flea with all the mass of a heavenly body and twice the weight of a starving child's dying plea. This is not a place for the faint of heart. And here is a place where the sleight of head should fear to tread. So maybe I shouldn't have let you know all those things my dumb heart said, but now that you know, I hope you're not scared of me like it's a full moon and I'm battling lycanthropy. Before the moon rises and I set sail on my subconscious sea to slay the creatures that have been tormenting me, one will be spared because it is unfair to annihilate an entire species, be it bird or bee or even insecurity. So you, yes you friend, are my Omega Manatee. No, I'm going to skip this. Is that like Joe from Fox News? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> This song is called Overdue. Your memory's hard to handle And the consequence of the kind Oh, the echoes of your laughter They can leave me shelterless And I write the lines around the eyes Of your smile's troubled Your memory's like a sharp blade that came with no receipt. And I cut myself so often for the company I keep. And I wanted to return it every moment spent with you. But that flame just wouldn't burn. Now the payment's overdue. I wish I could forget you Get a ref refund from time store So I don't drink myself to sleep at night And sob instead of snore Don't want to wake up in the morning Feeling made of glass 
I'm slipping from the shadow now. If I think I move too fast, your memory's like a sharp blade that came with no receipt, and I cut myself near daily for the company I keep, and I wanted to return here every moment spent with you. That flame just wouldn't burn me. Now the payments owe you were indeed. Overwhelmed by what I feel, and I wanted us to still be friends. But now I know magic isn't real, and I'm afraid to lose another lover like you. And I wake up with a start, and I roll over. Those who played in my heart. Ooh. I dug myself under there because I got to get the jaws of life. How you doing? From the heart of the beast, that's it. You couldn't control it, but you don't want to release. You stole a handful of fire from the heart of the beast. You couldn't control it, but you refuse to release it. You burn everything you touch. You Burn everything you touch. Howdy. You walk like you know things, things I wouldn't believe. Your passion for passive aggression is the only way you can breathe. The legal demeanor bit is tumbling out of your sleeve. Your passion for passive aggression is the only way you know how to breathe. Cause you, you burn everything you touch. You, I was kidding. Oh God. Burn everything you touch. No way. Keep time by being a big old cheese ball. <laughs> I love it. Hmm. Oh, didn't I just lose my spot joshing around with you guys? Ah, but you will never atone for the lie. See, you only pray when you're holding a gun. I said, you're dancing in the flames, oblivious to all the pain you cause, but you're the one to blame for everything, for everything. Oh, baby, touch my brain and burn all that you were away. Eventually, I'll be okay tomorrow, but not today, because you burn everything you touch. Oh, no, not more me, just more track. You, thank you, burn everything you touch. I'm gonna die on this thing. I 
Is it you? You burn everything you touch. You, you burn everything you touch. Like you spit flames in the worst kind of way, incinerating hearts with every word you say. A zealous faith to transubstantiate and to dismay. You interject the hand of faith to take the plans you make, so never stray. Like a shark, I've been swimming in my sleep, keeping busy while the darkness harkens from the deep, beckoning for reckoning. And so I pray my soul to keep, but I forgot I turn my soul to gold or roll with that. Creep. I can't stand a line taken out of context. A gang of thirsty queens on my junk trying to be neck, but I'm still smoldering, shouldering the emotional boulder, crushing my will and emboldening that older me to resurface. And jealousy takes a hold of me. Its sole purpose is anchoring me in my history. I'm so perfect at being my own worst enemy. A pyrotechnic color touching did my life in front of me, but I don't know how much longer I can burn while you get stronger. Thank you, guys. Um, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Um, so uh, I said this the last period. I'm just going to give you guys a little apology warning. Um, anybody who saw me last year might be like, wow, that J.C. Brooks has really ruined his voice over the why it's like my feet just love this thing uh, has really ruined his voice over the past year um, I'm actually just coming off of a <laughs> wonderful weekend with stomach flu lots of vomiting and now my throat is uh, swollen and gross so um, yeah yeah I'm probably gonna reach for a note <laughs> I won't quite grasp and that's life at least that's what they say oh So um, I'm doing a mix of songs from my main band, The Uptown Sound. Uh, this is one of the tunes that we're recording for the new album. And, uh, and my other band, the KID, it's like, When evening falls, I hear you call. And I run to you, I can't hold up the wall, no. You can stop me when I'm on the sink of a good time my world is static yeah baby when you're on my mind i just can't turn down with the way you make my heart beat when you tell me that you want me i just can't turn down with the way you make my heart beat when you touch me i can't control this thing i just can't turn down way you make my heart beat when you tell me that you want me i just can't turn down no no with the way you make me uh it seems impossible but i gotta try for you yeah it's not just physical no i love the things you do you know i get so short of breath I feel it down in my soul Cause you got me so damn high That I can't find the floor, no I said I just can't turn down With the way you make my heart beat When you tell me that you want me I just can't turn down With the way you make my heart beat When you touch me I can't control this thing I just can't turn down With the way you make my heart beat When you tell me that you need me I just can't turn down No, no 
And the rhythm's got me out of control. Ooh. I said the rhythm's got me out of control. Ooh. Ooh. Can't control it. I'm trying, trying to hold it. Reach out, dying to grab you. Want you even when I have you. Heartbeat out of my chest. Better know that till I get you, baby, I won't rest. Till the double kick down in your body and soul. And I got to, got to let you know the pull of you. It tears me up inside. Oh, I got to answer it. Or I will make it through the night. Hey. I know it's dangerous, the state I'm in. And that's so strange because I love the way I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah. I just can't tell down with the way you make my heart beat when you tell me that you want me. I just can't tell down with the way you make my heart beat when you touch me. I can't control this thing. I just can't tell down with the way you make my heart beat when you tell me that you want me. I just can't tell down. No. Thanks, y'all. Um, hmm, poetry. Sorry, that, that one time I kept all the words inside. Hearts Forge. Go. All my poetry streams, holy bleeping bleepsmith, this... <coughs> Somebody get a doctor, this kid is dying of a broken heart. And it's true, I spit the damning cries of a hungry baby tossing and turning in his rickety bassinet. Blah. Knowing he needs more than just a taste of that sweet titty to stave off death for another hour, which is why I make it a point to fall in love at least three times a day. I, I'll spot you on the train and make up an entire life for us together. I'll see you crying at my funeral before we reach the next stop, far before we even make eye contact. Or, or maybe in a coffee shop as we wait in line, I'll dream us a life shrinking us down small enough to hop along the eons that span between seconds so I have just enough time to spin the tale of how we first met when you got your hot chocolate with foam and as you turn to go to your table to read your copy of The Onion, BAM! You crush your cup against my chest, drenching me in thermonuclear cocoa, and I'd comically contort, unseeing for the time being, and this would strike a nerve with you, and instead of apologizing profusely and quickly leaving Onion forgotten, you'd make small talk, and I I'd make medium talk, and you'd make large talk, and so we're having a supersized conversation, laughing together and discovering how the same part of Bridge to Terabithia made us weep like we were little tiny kids, and before either of us knew it, we'd be just getting home from sending our daughter off to school and I'd think, God, I'd, I'd love this man with his dandruff and his ear hair and his dandruff and his ear hair. Come here, honey. And, and you'd think not the same thought about me, but something so similar, so close that it's apt to be a neighbor or cousin to mine, but that's nothing new because tandem thinking has been a feature of our togetherness since we've been loving things about each other that we never thought we could love about anyone. It is at this point that I notice that you've gotten your hot chocolate without foam and you've gone on your way. And the barista is standing there tapping her fingers, cursing me for daydreaming and wasting her precious baristan time with which she could have been grinding beans or flicking the bean or wondering what the hell else her life could have been had she not been so keen to carve a niche in the hot drink slinging scene. Or maybe I'll see you fumbling produce at Sid and Depano's on my lunch break and wonder how I've been alive for 24 years on this earth when I only just took my first breath after seeing you. And even if you don't love me, do, I would love to play with you one day when we are once again small, young beyond adult imagination, so young that a dozen lifetimes seem to pass in the twinkling frenzy between our eighth and ninth birthdays. We would play together and spread the spores that activate our mutual allergy to life without one another. Thanks, guys. Um, 
this is one that check check one I did last period is anybody who was chilling out sorry to the psycho I just hired him um, it's called how we be I get the blues because I get confused about just who's getting used. You see, clouds crowd my vision and cause a schism between my heart and mind. And I just can't find the words to tell you that I just want to hold you close and smell you, spell you when you're tired, lay you down pound for pound, light you up like a pyre, turn you out like a fire, put you down. I want to get you higher on me. God damn it. Can't you see? I just want to be with you. I'm splitting my brain here to explain my pain, dear, so don't you go and try to feign fear because I will show you everything that's inside here. My affliction is not fiction. It speaks of my constriction by you, my addiction to the freedom you've led my heart to. To me, our union is a tautology, true as can be, so tight. It stays dry in the sea, but doubt she follows me. She stalks me subtly. She grinds my nerves, making me swerve from my conscious decision to just let it be. Oh, let it be. Let it be. Now let it be. I never hear those words of wisdom. So let it be. I mean, I'm overtaken with jealousy just knowing that you're with he or she almost drives me to the point of othelacy, but I can't stake my claim for fear of the shame I would feel when you ran from me. <laughs> but incredibly, yet subtly, you tell me that you love me without using those words. I swear to God, I get the reds, I get the greens, I get the blues when I have to choose whether or not to follow this little breadcrumb trail of clues that you leave for me. But reality? Is anxiety ruins me. And I'm afraid that I just can't be every little thing that I see in your eyes. I'm nothing, just stuffing, puffing up some larger fantasy. I don't want to say that I'm scared, but I can't be every little thing that you want when you look at me. So I got to know. I got to hear you see. How we be. What are we? How we be. <laughs> what? What are we? What are we? Thank you, guys. Um, so uh, a couple of songs ago, I did uh, I did that heartbeat song, and uh, or maybe it was the last song. I can't remember. Um, but basically, uh, I and I addressed this last period too. I I get asked, uh, you know, why don't I write happy songs? <laughs> and the majority of my material is about um, you know broken hearts, a lot of pain. Uh, and Heartbeat is one of the, the first upbeat, non-whining <laughs> songs <laughs> that uh, I've written in a while. And, uh, I you know, I mean, amazing things happen in your life when you find a little bit of love. But I, I write a lot about the things that trouble me and the things that bother me because I don't really need to dissect my happiness. I just live my happiness. But when, when my pain is, is weighing on me, when it's tearing me apart and distracting me and all those other things that pain does, whether in reality or hyperbole, or when it's doing that, uh, that's when I need to you know, slice it up and kind of get outside of myself, get a look at it from outside of myself. And, uh, and that's kind of what fuels most of, uh, most of my writing, um, or at least what has until this point, who knows. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and I think that do you want to discuss this with me? Yeah. <laughs> just like just jamming myself underneath this and you guys are just listening to the words. Um
is gonna do on back and forth am I doing this right I know your feelings are strong but honey I just gotta do this tonight gotta calm this storm gotta find the words to say before we both before we both get carried away oh you're the one for someone you'll be everything they need you're the one for someone and I'm sorry it ain't me. You will know that you found the one for which you were designed. You're the one for someone. Don't want to lay this to rest. Don't want you out of my life. You should know your heart is perfect. But honey, I'm just not perfect for mine. You're like a round shaped peg in a square shaped hole. Don't fit, it's beyond our control. Someone, you'll be everything they need. You're the one for someone, and I'm sorry it ain't me. You will know that you found the one for which you were designed. You're the one for someone. You're the one for someone. You're the one for someone. Thanks, guys. So um, there's somebody who's coming in on Thursday who uh, who you've seen here before. Uh, her name is Miss Daphne Willis. And uh, how many of you guys saw her last year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's amazing. She and I got together and uh, we wrote a couple of tunes um, that uh, for this next album of ours. And that is uh, not one of the co-writes. That's actually one of hers. But I love it so much as soon as I heard it. I learned it by ear. I didn't even ask her for the right chords or lyrics, and I started playing it out <laughs> um, because it just, it you know, it touched something uh, in me. Because actually, it's 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 really easy to relate to because we've all been in a situation uh, where we were crushing on someone who was most certainly not crushing back, but didn't want to hurt our feelings, and uh, and that song just kind of cuts right to it. Um, or maybe I just spend way more time in those situations. And when I heard it, I'm like, this is my life, Daphne. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your pain. Um, however, this is, uh, this is one of our co-writes right here. Um, and also, uh, as you might have noticed, a lot of these are in, uh, in demo form because we are still recording. So... Um, there's a little bit of like tin drumming, like tinkertoy and Casio sound and whatnot. I don't know what to say. <laughs> now I know I chose the wrong way. Left you out there in the cold. But now I see that we were meant to be like a history. I almost didn't let unfold the weight of all the stones I carried. 
kept me anchored in the past. I was walking dead, you brought life to the road ahead. Even though I kept putting you last. You see, I, I never was the kind of man to let somebody hold my hand. I'm asking you for one more chance, begging you for one more chance. I'm down on my knees. This is my apology. Oh, this is my apology. So I'm putting my heart out in the open. I was too damn scared to let you know. Now all I'm doing is just praying, wishing, and I'm hoping. That you'll let me come back home. I never was the kind of man to let somebody hold my hand. I'm asking you for one more chance, I'm begging you for one more chance. I'm down on my knees. This is my apology for every heartbreak I put up a wall. Oh, 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 oh. Designing the blueprint for my own fall. Oh, 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 oh. You brought me out of my shell. For you, I'd walk through hell. Without you, I got nothing at all. To let somebody hold my hands. Oh. I'm asking you for one more chance. I'm begging you for one more chance. Without you, there's no me. This is my apology. Yeah, yeah. This is my apology. This is my apology. This is my apology. Oh. 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 Thanks, guys. close are we to the end of the period? Oh, Jesus, Doug, you're fresh. You're on. Questions. Anybody got questions? God, I really, really need to change my references. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 50-50. Sometimes it comes to me just like that. Like, I'll get a phrase in my mind, and I'll build around it. Um, and other times, no, 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 it just comes out really, really simply, and I, uh, I place it in a in a in a world where it's a little bit less heard. Like you know, when there's wordplay is just something to hide behind. It's a way to not speak directly and uh, and kind of deflect from your own hard feels. So um, that's one of the yes, ma'am. Sorry, I never know when a question is answered. I'm terrible at this. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, not like a, a diva anyone's ever heard of, <laughs> diva, but uh, my mom sang in a uh, band before I was born, until I was born, um, <laughs> and then I came out, and I just murdered her dream, um, but uh, no, 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 she's been incredibly supportive. She gets to live vicariously through me, but yeah, yeah, she uh, she had some, uh, and God, I remember finding pictures of my mom with like a huge afro and hot pants and her like friends all like posing. Uh, I think one band was called Stars, Heaven, and Ecstasy, and the other one was called Soul Shepherd. Uh, it, it, it was a different time. 
Um, yes, ma'am. Oh, God. Uh, when I started writing, I was probably in, when I started writing for pleasure, I was probably in high school. Um, it started out as writing lyrics for bands that I was in and just kind of expanded to an uh, appreciation of of poetry more as it then been uh, for its own sake. Hey, anyone? Uh, all right. Uh, hold on for one second. Just bouncing back and forth. Yes, sir. Biggest influences um, for poetry, Nikki Giovanni, Saul Williams, uh, songwriting is, uh, and actually you can't really hear it in some of the stuff that I did, but uh, really good storytellers, Don Fagan, um, one half of Steely Dan, uh, Tom Waits, um, uh, Stevie Wonder is another one. Just, uh, I, I love anyone who can tell a great story. Yes. Um, wondering whether or not it's good. <laughs> uh, okay. There's, there's, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I majored in musical theater, or rather, I have a BA in musical theater. I majored in film at one point, and I minored in English at another point. Oh, no problem. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I am. Uh, just search for us on the YouTubes or the Spotify's or the Amazons, the iTunes. It's J.C. Brooks in the Uptown Sound. Um, or just Google J.C. Brooks in case you're at risk for carpal tunnel. Um, huh? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> such a flat answer. I could barely find it. That's why I'm reading my phone. Um, no. Uh, and we are fresh out of questions. God bless you. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Would, oh, yes, sir. Uh, it's called the KID, which is an abbreviation of The King is Dead. It's an electro-pop duo um, that uh, initially was going to be a fusion of Portishead and Frank Ocean. And uh, <laughs> and uh, now it's, it's its own thing. Uh, yeah. I'm so terrible at these. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I sang in chorus in high school and... Um, and it was a thorough enough program that uh, we actually had hardcore units on music theory. So that was kind of where I got my start learning the technical aspect of music. Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it stands for Jason Cody, actually. Um, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> never that. That's way too much responsibility. Uh, you know, that's pressure. God bless him. He can handle it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so, uh, yeah, except on my birth certificate, the Cody is spelled with a K. Um, but uh, we got together in 2007, and we didn't want to be J.K. Brooks in the Harry Potter sound explosion. So uh, we went with a more traditional spelling of Cody, and uh, it's kind of been like that ever since. And now people who knew me well before that are calling me J.C., and it's kind of weird and annoying. <laughs> like, hey, JC, wait, you met me as Jason. Uh oh, you guys got to go. Peace. Uh, thank you all. B by the way, thanks for coming out and hanging and listening and asking questions and all that other good stuff. Oh, oh, and by the way, I have CDs for sale. Uh, if you would, <laughs> if you would be open.